Hi, it's David Reyes here with Reyes Financial Architecture. Thanks for watching. I um, want to give you some thoughts today. We had uh, our Federal Reserve Chairman uh, Powell give a talk today about the, the what's called the FOMC, the Federal Open Market Committee meeting, talking about interest rates and markets. And basically what he had to say, I, I totally disagree with, but he said that you know economy is going to improve with the stimulus that we're putting into the markets. Um, kind of a broken record, heard this before, 2008, 2000. Um, now today with COVID, obviously. Uh, he said he's not worried about inflation. I am. And uh, he, he says also they're going to keep interest rates down for the next two to three years, which give him a memo. Rates have been rising already. So we now have really two problems that I see in the markets right now. I call it the dual dilemma, kind of the two-headed monster of the market. You have that stock market and the bond market, of course. In the stock market, we're at really, really high valuations. And I know we just passed the $1.9 trillion stimulus COVID package, which unfortunately was only about 10% COVID, COVID relief. Um, but the fact is that's very stimulus, stimulative and it's very inflationary. What happens when you have inflation is you have higher interest rates, okay? And so even though Chairman Powell believes that and says that we're not gonna have inflation and rates are gonna stay down, inflation's here. Check the gas prices, check your food grocery prices. Um, and also we have interest rates that are rising. So again, this dual dilemma of stock market valuations, we're up nearly 100% from the March lows when the market crashed 35% in 30 days. Think about that for, for a minute, 35% in 30 days. We had this amazing recovery, um, but market valuations are very, very rich. But my bigger concern, believe it or not, is the bond market. So people buy bonds typically because they feel they're safe. What if I told you the bond market is probably not a very safe place to be today, and it may have turned the corner in the sense that bonds may not be able to be used as the same type of, uh, of income generator and growth generator they have for the last 40 years. And I'll talk a little more about why that is. We have really low, low yields. Right now, the yield on the 10-year treasury is about 1.5%, a little higher actually. It was down below half percent. Um, and so I think bonds are going to have a little bit of problems, and they already do. So back in the third quarter of 2020, 10-year Treasury bonds were down. Really, they got as low as about 0.37%. They were down about 067 Today, they're at about 1.6%. So that's more than a doubling of interest rates coming from a very low level in the last year. Okay. So what happens is, is that we have had low interest rate policy. So this is 1980. The peak of the bond market, interest rates, you probably remember, were in the high 15, 16% range. I think they peaked out at like 15.8% in 1980 and come all the way down to here today at about 1.5%. This is really good for the bond market. As rates fall, the value of your bonds actually rise. Okay. The problem is as rates go up, as what we're seeing happen today, going from 0.6 to 1.6, is that the value of bonds actually falls. So this tailwind that we've had in these quote diversified balanced portfolios is pretty much gone. So now when rates rise, the value of bonds actually fall. So the problem is, is that I will tell you as a retirement plan advisor for 25 years, bonds are not a very good asset class for cash flow, for risk mitigation right now. And so I would look to other alternatives because one of the things that we want to look at, here's a good chart of this actually. So this is a couple of lines here. So this SPY, that's the S&P 500. Okay, this is as of today, up 6.25%. But look at a 20-year bond. 20-year treasury bonds are down 14% year to date. 20-year treasury bonds. Seven to 10-year bonds are down about 5%. Okay, so the longer that you go out on the bonds from a 10-year to a 20-year bond, the more money you lose. So if you're like half bonds, half stock, you've barely made any money this year. So the, the, the reality is, is that it's gonna be more difficult managing money going forward if you're relying on the bond market, and most of you, the average, I just read a study by Vanguard, and Vanguard said that 60, uh, about, uh, I think it was baby boomers with $500,000 uh, plus or more um, had an average of 60 to 65% stock and 35 to 40% bonds, 60, 40, stock and bonds, okay? So most of you own a lot of bonds. Here's the last thing I'm gonna show you. This is a projection of what the experts think. Going forward, Vanguard says that over the next five to 10 years, bonds are gonna return a measly 0.9%. A 60-40 portfolio, 60% stock, 40% bonds, the average institution believes in the next five to 10 years, 2.46%. So the problem is, is that it's very difficult right now with the bond market and stock market high valuations, interest rates rising, the value of bonds falling, that it's really difficult right now to manage money this way. So the bottom line is right now, bonds are a difficult place to be. We've had a 40-year bond bull market. 
that ship has sailed. We really need to look at other ways that we've used for many, many years to mitigate risk uh, and to increase return and also cash flow in portfolios. So if you want to reach out to me personally to set up a complimentary second opinion, I'd love to sit down with you. You can also hear me on AM 600 Kogo every Sunday from 9 to 10 and also on ABC Channel 10 uh, from 10 to 10.30 as we bring our Retirement Architecture Show. Great talking to you. Thanks for listening. Hope to see you soon.